Getting, yeah. That's a the children are waiting for you. Have you read Feynman's Rainbow? No. Okay, this is like, have you read about Feynman at all? <laughs> I don't know about Feynman. Okay, so this I, is. The only things I've ever bought at auction, ever. Yes. Two Japanese saddles uh -huh. that I bought to reward myself. I said TV that would show? be my reward when I finished the four-hour. No, when I finished the oh. four-hour body, and I think when it if it hit number one, it plays like ten grand. Yeah. The other auction, the only other time that I've really bought things, I bought uh, some of the placemats that he sketched on at the wow. strip clubs. Yeah, yeah, where he would he would, he would draw original Feynman diagrams. And I have his tambourine. So yes, I am a huge fine man. Okay, so aficionado. Leonard uh, Moldenau, he wrote The Drunkard's Walk, uh -huh. right? Yeah, I recognize the name. But so he was a PhD student or pr assistant professor, whatever. He gets a job as a physics, uh, whatever. He's, he's learning physics at Caltech. Yeah. And his office is next to Feynman oh, as wow. Feynman is getting old and dealing with cancer. But it's like... I think it's the best biography of Feynman. It's small, and it's just about their experience. So it's basically just like kind of his conversations with him and Feynman. Oh, I man. loved it. It's oh, so cool. good. All right, all right. You read a lot of books. So if you it, say you I, loved it, I, I love it. This is it. also appetizingly small. That's what that like the the Feynman biography. Says the guy I tried who to read. Can't seem to write any book less than <laughs> well, they, pages. There's a book called Genius. It's a biography of Feynman, but it's like huge, and it was it was okay, but like it wasn't me. Oh yeah, we're doing a Christmas Who's party this? in a little bit. Uh, that is. Gordo, right? That's Gordo. Gordo. Junior's cat. the black one. Gordo's these cat, are yeah. cats from Cerro Gordo. Um, these are these are ghost town cats. I grew up with four cats and two dogs. That was a lot. they a, a lot of allergies. Yes, they uh, they rule the bookstore. Oh, uh, have you seen Pressfield's new book? I don't know if we have it. The Daily Pressfield. Oh wow! Look at this. Oh, you know what? I think Did he send you one? He didn't send me one of these. All right, well, take that one. <laughs> That's cute. Oh, this is cool. I could spend all day just looking I know. at the books. This is where I sometimes get myself into trouble. Well, this is all your fault, as I said. <laughs> oh, wow. All right, those, those are my two. Yeah, yeah. The, the Daily Pressfield one's great. Seems and then cool. I think the Feynman one's really good. Fine books. Oh, yeah, will you sign these for us? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was looking at that, too. Oh. Yeah, yeah for sure. Happy to sign them. I haven't signed books in a long time. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the other thing I've been talking about where it's like there's this sense that the Stoics were like depressing or dour or whatever like that that the people in the ancient world oh, I see you guys have put this to the right page All right I, I'm, these, will be, uh, these will be signed on slightly different pages oh that's so funny but that that like that they that get, getting up and living was an intense act of hope and optimism, if you think about it. Yeah, it's like life, life at that point, like the worst thing you faced was not a microaggression on Twitter. <laughs> yes, it was, yeah, it was, it was devastating, tragic, brutal awfulness. Like, oh, my third kid died and I've just been exiled. Awesome. Yeah, right. One of the Stoics, Masonius Rufus, who's Epictetus' teacher, he was exiled four times. Like imagine you just have to lose everything and start over four times. You're like, not again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No. Although I, I, I wrote about this, like, so, you know, Seneca's exile is like this formative moment in his life. It's like this horrible thing that happens to him, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know where Seneca was exiled? Corsica. Corsica, yeah. My sister just went there on vacation. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, he, he presents it as this, like, uh, you know, like, awful place. And I guess it is awful if that's how you look at it. Yeah. But it's like, it was also amazing. <laughs> like, so it's all, I guess it really is all I know. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not exactly Siberia. Like Napoleon is from Corsica, and like the last thing he wants to do before he's before he is exiled is see the place that Seneca was exiled. That's funny. <laughs> you read? Um, I think we're out of it. Shit, I would have given it to you. There's this book, uh, The Sun, by this guy Philip Meyer. The Sun. The Sun, like S O N. Uh, it's a Pierce Brosnan show on uh, Showtime, also, but it's like maybe the best novel about Texas I think oh. I've read. It's like, well, I guess there's Lonesome Dove, which is. The, the undisputed pretty, pretty one, good. yeah. So th this is, uh, I, I won't compare the two, but it's like it's crazy good novel about it. I'm going with him uh, on Saturday. I'm excited about it. Oh, but, wow. um, it's the same thing. Like if you, like, you know, then if you don't eat at all, you just feel like, even though you, we waste food all the time, if you killed it, you feel, you feel like extra responsible. Yeah, you feel super responsible, totally. Even though you did kill, like they killed the cow for you, but you don't think about it that way. <laughs> 
Although I, I actually, and this is not always net positive. Uh, I feel very badly about food, food waste. I'm yeah, of course. Kind of weird about it, uh, or maybe weird by modern standards, I guess. No, no, it feels. If you think about where it came from, which is death, yeah. it's shitty to yeah. just be like, eh. I ordered too much turkey, so <laughs> my bad. Yeah. How often do you go hunting? Uh, I basically go deer hunting once a year yeah. in my backyard. <laughs> I got those two behind you. Uh, there you go. You just like pick it's... them off from the porch in between puffs of your No, no, no. I have a tree blind like in, the, in my back pasture. Although uh, the trick, the taxidermy is like colossally expensive because it's all about ego. Those are not with, those are the horns from the deer and you can just buy like old, like there's, a, there's this guy who just buys like old taxidermy on Craigslist or whatever, you know, from estate sales for like $20. And then they put the, your horns on it. <laughs> and it costs like- Wait, explain this thing? Okay, so like, that's not the head. Oh, you got like a centerfold, like a state deer. And yes. And you put the, the, the hat on. From, yes, exactly, exactly, <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, that's what the, like, if you, you, it would be hard for me to recognize what the deer's head looks like. The horns are the distinctive yeah. ornament. Have you ever seen, I think it's, uh, there's a, a shirt. It's, it was a website, and I think it's an Instagram account called uh, Crap Taxi. Yeah, yeah, Bad Taxi. Like, it's the worst, and you're like, what? Although I do have my, my, my claim to fame as a hunter is, and I didn't know, I just thought it was a regular deer because it was dark. But I got a melanistic deer. Oh, wow. Okay. Which are like one in a million, I guess. Yeah, yeah. That's wild. And I've seen on my camera, I've seen there's a melanistic buck sometimes, uh, which are like, you know, like one in a bazillion. But this is, a, this is during antlerless season. You but. could auction off the right to shoot your melanistic buck. Well, I don't have high fence, so it's not mine. Yeah. It's owned, just owned, it's, by the, owned by the public. Yeah, it's just it's just chance. Like so, he, you know what I mean? Like, if if he'd snuck in there and then I knew he was around, I just know he is ex, he is he has been documented once, but otherwise he's Bigfoot to me. You know, like <laughs> I may never see him again. So you got your new book. When's that coming out? Justice one will be June, oh, and sick. then I gotta I gotta start and finish the wisdom one day. Then I'll be done. You're a machine, man. Oh, by the way, look at this one. Look at these two. It's, I was just looking at them. Yeah, yeah. What's I, going they, on there? It's, it's just a different paper. Whoa. And so I think really? it, we can't tell if they're total misprints or... How many pages? It's is the there? same number of pages, she said, but it's just much thinner. Wow, that's wild. I've actually yeah. never seen these before. That's wild. Yeah. yeah. I was looking at it, I was like, are you tripping balls right now? What is it? <laughs> yeah, this was, this was also... Uh, as far as I know, first of its kind, first book based on a podcast. I think this is mm. get it while well, the getting's good. <laughs> get in there. No, like I probably wouldn't start a podcast now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what I don't know what the next thing is. No idea. Yeah. No idea. Like it's ten years in April, right? Yeah. Like I'm. Pa I I just feel lazy saying this, but I'm like, I've been at this a while. Yeah. I just don't have the same like piss and vinegar and like go go go. But you also have the and built I love in doing audience. what I'm doing, but just in terms of like, I'm going to do anything to grow type. Yeah, sure. It's not, it's just not there. <laughs> well, yeah, because I, I think I was the fourth guest and I am just turned in today the 10 year, the updates to a 10 year anniversary edition of Obstacle. Yeah. So, so that's, that's crazy to think about. Yeah. I mean, how old, when, when was, so, I mean, in what, two years, three years, this will be the. 20th anniversary? That seems insane. You, you're not old enough to have a book that's 20 years old. You have a book that can legally drink? <laughs> I had... Uh, I had all these books, by the way. Of course. Yeah. They sell in the store, so... I had, uh, I had Peter T. on a while ago, and um, he only... He did it remote from his house, because that's fucking Peter. Uh, yeah, but anyways... The, so Clark saw it today, and he goes, did you have Dwayne The Rock Johnson on the podcast? <laughs> like, he said it like that. He said, Dwayne The Rock Johnson? <laughs> like, I was like, first off, no. But second, like, I don't think he realizes that that's a nickname, and you could pick one or the other. Like, 
Yeah, he's putting it in the middle. Yeah. Like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Carlo, the Gambino Biagotti. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dwayne The Rock Johnson. I read a lot, it's sort of my job. You can't write without reading. For almost 15 years now, once a month, I send out an email with my favorite book recommendations for that month. Books that I've been reading, books that I've been going through, books that changed my life, that inspired me, that I think connect to what's happening in the world. And you can sign up right now at ryanholiday.net slash reading list.